to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. I've not backslidden, I've been trusting. You don't think I don't have options. It's just because you are God and oh no, 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 no. And then we wrap up with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you because I know you hear me. And heaven is watching, angels are watching, demons are also watching in shock and say, What kind of ignorant people are these? Can I tell you this? If you must pray, your heart must be involved. But let me tell you sincerely. The Bible says that prayer can be used to obtain requests. Let me encourage you. Learn to pray and to take every matter of your life to God in prayer and expect him to respond. Expect him to respond. Expect him to respond. Lord, I thank you. There's this thing happening in my office. I thank you. But you see, in making requests, God does not answer you because you asked him. He answers you because he said he would do it. So if you cannot connect what you want to what God has said, he will not be answered. God only answers prayers because what you want is connected to what he has said he would do. The protocol of God's dealings with men is that he only does what he says. If God has not said it, whether to you or that which is written, there is no basis for him doing it. I want to rise. God, I want to rise. Sincere prayer, but that prayer will not be answered. You have to find what he has said about your rising. Lord, I want to rise. And you have said this. You see, God only does what he says he does not do what you want he does what you want that is connected to what he has said please learn this very simple principle is the reason why many believers do not obtain answers to prayers they ask but you see they do not ask properly he's bound to his word that he honors his word even above his name so when you approach the parliament of heaven there must be intelligence to your prayer. Are we together? Yes. Lord, I'm tired of suffering. Move me forward. What is the basis? Why should God commit himself that far? And you find a scripture. It was the Lord that caused Moses and Aaron to advance. And that God is no respecter of persons. You see, you are constructing your request with intelligence. He said to present your cause. He said to bring forth your strong reasons. Number three. The third assignment of prayer in the life of the believer. I wrote down here is for spiritual legislation. You can put in bracket decrease and creation. Amazing. Hmm. two scriptures numbers 14 and verse 28 numbers 14 and verse 28 tell them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so will i do unto you second scripture job 22 and verse 28 Job 22 and verse 28. It says, Thou shalt also decree a thing. Listen, there is a dimension of prayer that is not talking to God. It is using his authority to create possibilities. 
Prayer is not always talking to God. There is a dimension of prayer that is responsible for making decrees over creation and creating possibilities in your life. It is not always about asking God to do things. There are times that in prayer, you use that God-given authority to now begin to create possibilities. And whatsoever Adam called it, that was the name thereof. If you call it a blessed tomorrow, that becomes the name thereof. If you call it favor in spite of the storms, that is the name it will bear. Your days and your moments are waiting for, them, for you to give them an identity. Waiting for you to give them definition. If you do not give them a name, the devil will give them any name and they will become what they were instructed to become. Are we together? This is very powerful. That you wake up in the morning and you decree, this is the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. I prophesy and I declare that Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. And you walk through that day as if creation owes you. And you begin to see all kinds of miracles and all kinds of doors open for you. And this brings that, that the joy that comes from knowing that your life is producing and commanding results will bring a consolation to your Christian experience. Listen to me. Do not be silent. Learn to create possibilities. Are we together? Every day is at the mercy of your speaking. Instruct it to become for you what the word of God says should be. The third assignment of prayer you must learn to legislate. We have, I'm sure in this church, and probably following, we have members of parliament in this nation, House of Assembly, Senate, and did you know all that they do is to use words, develop and enact policies, and these policies directly affect people. Passes through first reading, second reading, and all of that, they adopt it, it becomes law. Speaking. They are paid to speak. They speak from their minds, from their thinkings, from their perspectives. If you keep quiet over your destiny, is what you do not want that will happen. I assure you, whether you plant or not, something will always grow in the farm, provided there is rain. And unfortunately, it's what you do not want that will grow. Are we together? Speak over your business. Speak over your ministry. Speak over your family. Your assignment is to keep speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will not give birth for sorrow. In the name of Jesus, my mind is fruitful. The favor of the Lord is upon me. In the name of Jesus, I am escaped from these six things. Even the scourging tongues of men. You are praying and you are making decrees. You forget about what who is thinking or not thinking. Your assignment, your destiny is absolutely dependent on the power of creation. Things only happen to you if you are silent. Negative things I mean. Number four. Are you ready for this? The fourth assignment of prayer is as a tool for warfare and intercession. Parakatosiata. Warfare and intercession. Apostle, is this necessary? Hmm. Live long. That's my answer. I don't have much to tell you. Please make sure you are alive for long and you will revisit this message again and again and again. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh not. Satan is called the thief. I don't know how many of you want to be friends with thieves. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is his tripartite character of destruction. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. First John chapter 5 and verse 19. We're wrapping up now. First John 5, 19. Someone's destiny is changing this morning. In the name of Jesus. 1 John 5, 19. And we know that we are of God, it says. 
please help me read the remaining part and the whole world stop does that include the region of your office does that include where your church is does that include your village does that include nigeria does that include the space of the land you just bought the whole world lieth in wickedness when speaking with my people i would always make this observation nigerians know how to lament emotionally and we say who did i offend very comforting statement but how erroneous you do not have to offend anyone everyone is born in the middle of an old story that you are forced to be part of the story of the issue between light and darkness is not something that started with us everyone was born in the middle of an old and ancient story and can i tell you that story is so constructed that the moment you appear in it you must act in that scene nobody invites you to be part of that movie provided you are born you pass through the womb of a woman you must be part of it satan knows that everyone born of a woman is a potential tool in the hand of god number one he does not even give you a chance to grow if he can kill you he will with joy i guarantee you satan does not have to wait for you to be born again to be trained and mentored uh -uh. in the bible children were killed he killed them without thinking twice and then you now come to stand before god's people and surrender your heart to jesus christ i hope you know that when you were giving your life to christ it was not the preacher who led you that was seeing you alone the realm of the spirit including the demons principalities and like i would tell my people most believers do not understand the power of the life they just received but satan and demons understand what you received they know the potential of this life you have received and they know that by your declaration you have drawn a line i think it was on sunday i was talking to my people and i was helping them to see and appreciate the extent of the rebellion and the stubbornness of satan that for millions millions of years at least as we know maybe more from the time he was casted from heaven satan is still fighting god till today what determination that he will not give up satan comes to you and talks to you about god as if he does not you can imagine as if he does not factor his defeat in the discussion satan never talks to you as if he's defeated I hope you will laugh let me tell you what i'm about to tell you someone came and met me i think i was praying for people after service one time and a young boy came just stood before me and i saw something that looked like the poster of an election and i looked at him and he came with conviction and i opened it and i wanted to run away he was coming out for president of nigeria having shouted and thought that all things were possible i looked at this my dear brother and i didn't know how how what what angle do i become diplomatic do i go directly i looked at this boy and you will know you will see the gaps in knowledge the decades of learning this guy would need to ah. yes president i don't know what party i'm not sure there was a party yet in all fairness in all fairness i'm not if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he stood at the line for prayer said he came to receive it i, I told him i said look um my my dear brother let me tell you this um god walks in seasons number one and life is in levels the gentleman did not agree you see that And I told him, I said, do you know what it means to be the president of any nation? And then the president of Nigeria. He was absolutely convinced. Absolutely. 
it would have been better if he said maybe he had a dream or prophecy he just came and just believed that he wants to change nigeria he's never been class rep he's never been um maybe uh, uh, uh not even counselor leader of some whatever it is you think god hates us that much as a nation I know we've sinned against God as a nation, but oh, come on, please. There's still a remnant that... This gentleman was almost making trouble. I just said, kneel down. Just laid hands on him and said, please, just, just carry your trouble and go. I'm not ready. <laughs> so imagine, do you know, with that kind of determination, there is nothing you would tell that guy. That's the kind of determination Satan has over your destiny. That as unwise as it looks, Satan still believes in his agenda. That's what that's the point I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to pass across. You would think Satan should be so afraid because of your last testimony and not come again. Satan, you watch him. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. You testified as a triumph of light over darkness. If I were Satan, I would give up. The way the miracle happened, he stopped the first child and you gave birth to twins and you think Satan will fold his arms. He will rest and come back again. This is the kind of adversary we have. If you do not know who Satan is and his level of determination, you will take him for granted to your peril. I'm showing you the necessity for the warfare and the intercessory dimension of prayer. Satan will kill anything he finds to kill. You know, Satan does not have an agenda of himself. He studies what God wants and creates an agenda out of it. It's not like he has a preset. No, 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 no. He looks at your life. He does not have any personal bias towards you. He just wants to know what God is doing. And he hears that God wants to lift you. That in this year, God is taking Roger to another dimension. He says, fine. Now we have an assignment. His assignment is a subset of whatever God is saying. Anytime God is speaking, don't you ever think you are the only one hearing. Satan is a very intelligent listener. When he came to Adam, he said, what did God say? I don't tell me what. I just want to know what God said. Because my assignment is tied to what he said. Are we learning? So the moment he said, this charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy. God had spoken to you. I'm lifting you this year. And I'm bringing honor and glory to your life. Don't just say amen and stop. You must engage. You go to the place of prayer and ward off all of those things. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Have a few more minutes. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Let me show you a very powerful scripture. It says, Be sober. First Peter 5 and verse 8. Be sober. It says, Be vigilant. What does it mean to be vigilant? To be vigilant means to be sensitive, to not be careless. To be discerning it says because your adversary not your boss not the one fighting you those are puppets the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour jesus gave us power and authority over satan there are families who continue to watch the devil wreck them and shred them into pieces and they keep getting depressed. There are lives, you think the devil wants you to continually be anointed in ever increasing dimensions. He's seen the havoc that the anointing in your life has done so far to the kingdom of darkness. Will he grant you access to intelligence and systems and structures that can multiply the anointing? He will fight it tooth and nail. Satan knows what you did with the last 10 million God gave you. 
he knows how the house of God benefited. You think he will sit down and just allow doors to be open anyhow. You don't know Satan. He's every other thing but lazy and foolish. Two things you cannot credit to Satan. He's not lazy and he's not foolish. Apostle, why is it that other people who are not Christians, they don't even pray and they move forward? There is nothing that is pro-kingdom in their agenda. So Satan has no concern about fighting them satan attacks but in truth he has a protocol listen many of you watch football if you are playing say a semi-final or a finals and you are supposed to weaken that team your your target will be the the strongest of the, the key players they call them is that true if you can bring one or two out i think you've done a good job as far as making a contribution to the defeat of that team that's what Satan is doing. So, the fact that Satan is not letting you rest should tell you the role you play in God's agenda. Why is it that out of 10 people in your family, he seems to have isolated you? I tell you why. Because in his mind, you are equal to the strength of the 10 people. Rather than seeking to destroy the 10 people one by one, why is Satan focusing on your church? Why is Satan focusing on you as a man of God? You are worth to him in his thinking. You are worth to him more than 5,000 preachers. Fighting you is most profitable to him than fighting is a way of conserving energy. When he comes to you, it should be a consolation that you are really valuable in God's agenda. Is God speaking now? Satan, leave my family alone. That's not it. He's found out that there is something in that family you are not aware of that is pro-kingdom. Satan, why are you fighting my marriage? Why are you fighting my fruitfulness? Why are you fighting this? Satan does not fight anything for itself. He looks beyond that thing and sees what it will achieve. So Hannah, if Samuel is coming out of you, get ready to be barren. It's not about your womb. It's about Samuel. Who else will anoint Saul? Who else will anoint David? Elizabeth, if John is coming out of you, who will ordain Jesus? Who will save the world? You are on my list. Joseph, if your rising will bring preservation to God's people so that they become God's covenant people, the people from whom the Messiah will come, then get ready for trouble. Can I tell you this? This is an information I'm giving you as we prepare to pray. I can tell you this by revelation and I can tell you this from scripture. Satan attacks, but he does not attack anyhow. He attacks based on, on how much point that attack will score as far as his advancement is concerned. So he can isolate preachers. He can isolate businessmen. If you plan to be serious with God, listen to this message. If you don't plan to be serious with God, that's all right. But if you plan to be serious with God, I want you to know that not everybody is willing to be serious with God. The moment you declare to be serious with God, you have drawn the line with Satan. Will he come? Yes. Uninvited? Yes. Is called a thief. Are thieves invited? All you need to do is to be successful. Build a house. Your success and your results is the invitation. But we have a God in heaven. Now thanks be to God who causes us how long? Always. Now thanks be to God, preacher. Now thanks be to God, businessman. Now thanks be to God that in spite of the schemings of darkness, there is already a way of escape. Someone should rejoice that there is a way of escape. A way of escape in prayer. I can engage by the power of prayer and subdue everything that looks like a manifestation of darkness. This morning, 
we are going to take five minutes to engage i know that we have spoken about these four points but i am concerned about the fourth because this is where many of us are in and in the next five minutes i like us to take some time to pray can i tell you there are certain gates you need to bring down this morning you need to tell yourself enough is enough the bible says i daniel understood by books he knew when his season had come to an end when seasons come to an end do not let satan prolong it thus far have you come he said no further shall you go it's time to release the gates of ministry to release the gates of can i tell you creation is waiting for that command if you know how to pray you will triumph and prevail over situations and circumstances i am a product of prayer i know what prayer has done in my life and i know what it continues to do no matter how weak a man is let that man pray no matter how big the situation is let that man pray luke 18 and verse 1 he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint he said there was a king a judge an unjust judge that that man did not fear god and he did not regard men and there was a weak helpless widow who came to him and said avenge me my adversary and the bible says for a long time he will not hear her but for her importunity her persistence and staying power and jesus says that if this woman she had no system of physical defense but she knew how to pray the man said even though i do not fear god and i do not regard men yet this woman by her continual disturbance she can weary me if you can weary men you can weary closed doors you can weary closed seasons and open them up are we learning please in the next five minutes there's no prayer point you are praying in the spirit and you are engaging with understanding and then if one or two prayer points come from it i'll communicate it but i'm sure that if 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 if, if i'm allowed you can just walk around within your limited space but i want you to pray seriously the next five minutes you are praying this is warfare and intercession lift your voice and begin to pray Shanakata brande geskati balakatosia. Shabrekate kotosko to parata kata brande gede kata. You are praying. This is for your destiny. This is for your ministry. Shakete bakatosko to brande gede lakata. Shanegete brande skati lakata brando skati lakabaziata. Embrekete kete po kotosko to brande gede lakapareyakata. Is someone praying? Hold on to the horns of the altar and pray. It's time to shift climates and seasons. My life must experience a personal revival. It's time for that which is asleep to be awakened in me. Pray. You who is following in your home, following in your office, make sure you are connecting and praying right where you are. Go ahead and pray. The hindrances that have come as a result of controlling powers over my life and over my destiny, I challenge you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Now please listen. Hallelujah. When it has to do with prophetic prayer of warfare and intercession, there are rules of engagement. 
There are pre three principal ways from scripture that Satan affects and even inflicts believers. Never forget these three. Number one, and the highest platform for his invitation into the life of the believer is called the power of covenants. Number two is ignorance. Number three is disobedience. These are the only as complicated as Satan looks. If he ever finds access to any life and any destiny, it must be one or more of these three platforms. And the way you close those doors and you deal with it differ. Covenants. You, when Satan is having access to a believer, a church, a business, an individual based on covenants, you don't cast him away. It takes the ministry of the blood. You see that now. The blood has an assignment to nullify covenants on legal basis because the blood has a voice. So there are rules of engagement. You've heard me say it. As powerful as God is, he could not cast sin out of man. To say, man, I am God and I am creator. The earth is mine. I cast sin. I declare you righteous. Uh -uh. The blood had to precede that speaking. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. I think it was Isaiah 49 that says, shall the prey be taken? The captive of the mighty and the prey from the terrible. He said, thus said the Lord, even the lawful, there is a kind of captivity that is called lawful captivity. And the Bible is saying, even under that condition, there is still a provision in the economy of God where an individual can be free. Don't you think this is not an issue? There are many ignorant believers who do not know that covenants are a system of authorization. Listen, if I am a thief and I step into this assembly to pick this, if I hear any sound, what do I do? I run away because I am a thief. But let's say I meet, God forbid, but let's say I meet any of the ushers or somebody who is a worker in this church and he sells this for me and I pay him and I come to pick it. If I hear you coming, will I run away? Why? Because I paid for it. You are not going to tell me go away. You will have to bring a judge. There has to be a system of appeasal. That's what Jesus came to do. There are spirits that are not casted away. This kind you overcome them by the blood of the Lamb. Believe me, this is, this is why many believers just pray all kinds of sincere and well-meaning prayer that does not produce power in the spirit because there are rules of engagement. I speak the blood, I plead the blood, eternal saving blood. I don't have to cry For you have paid the price The blood There are many demons were minding their business And many parents and individuals went and invited them And said I need assistance And they said we don't just give assistance They said I know I'm desperate. Fine. And later on, you just wave them off. You see, let me tell you this. I'm not glorifying Satan. When the missionaries came to Nigeria, listen carefully, they brought the evangelical dimension of the gospel. But many of them did not have the spiritual intelligence to understand the modus operandi of the kingdom. They did not open us up to the dynamics of victory in its entirety. Many of them came and they did not even know why they died. They just came to villages and brought the gospel and died. Some went back. And now they did their best. We must give them that honor. Except that personal and territorial revival. Let me challenge you. Go and study on the, the revival in Fiji Island. If you can go, I'm sure it should be on YouTube. You go and read about the documentary. They, they killed and massacred some missionaries who came to preach and before one of the missionaries died 
I think in anger or sadness, he made a pronouncement over the entire Fiji island. They laughed it over, shrugged it over, and swept it under the carpet. Many years later, the fish refused to produce from the river. They would plant. There's a documentary. Crops refused to grow. And the people were suffering. And then it got to a point where some prayer warriors said, no, we can't be here. They began to pray. You see, when you don't know what to do, pray. It is in prayer that what to do comes. They began to pray and a prophetic word came that there were legal speakings over that place. Do you know these people prayed and some other people while they were praying said, don't mind these people, nothing will happen. To their shock, that land remained barren. Until a few people came with spiritual intelligence, fortunately, they could access the grandchildren of those missionaries that were murdered. And when that happened, they invited them over. It was, it was a national ceremony where they apologized to them and they prayed and the people released blessings on the land. It was not more than 24 hours. Go and find the documentary. Fish from nowhere, different species that were missing just came out from the river. This earth is mysterious so, and there are rules of engagement. Can I tell you, covenants are powerful. Covenants are not emotional. No. It is the reason why anything God takes serious in your life, he creates a covenant around it. Marriage, your salvation, when God wants to take anything serious, he does not trust the vacillations of emotions. If God has not brought a covenant to that thing, you will not get his best. Everything that God takes serious, he connects to covenant. And then disobedience. Having the readiness to judge all disobedience if your own obedience is complete. And then ignorance. Ephesians 4.18. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Why am I giving you these keys? Because we are going to pray. There are some of us who in our prayer right now, you need to plead the blood. That I will never have a repetition of what happened to my father and what happened to my mother. I have been called out of every tribe and every tongue. And in the name of Jesus, the legal binding, the speakings, the ill speakings connected to my territory, connected to my bloodline. What then is the advantage of my encounter with the blood? You can, you can engage it just because you are born again does not automatically you have to engage it with understanding are you ready to pray now please lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray the blood is our, our basis for access plead the blood upon your life your finances your family that everything that gives the devil legal access over my health, over my life, over my joy, over my peace, over my church, over my spiritual life. I stand by the blood of the eternal covenant and I decree and I declare that in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, that blood that advocates my release, that blood that advocates my freedom. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood is against you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Failure, the Lord rebuke you. Setbacks, the Lord rebuke you. Someone pray. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Don't be tired of praying. The flesh may be weak, but the spirit is willing. It's been waiting for this chance so that a door be opened over you once and for all.
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline